Hi everyone, this is Miss Fusaro, and today we are going to analyze the poem Pride by Dalia Rabikovic. Um, you should only watch this video after you've taken the time to work either with independently or with your teams about analyzing the poem. So this, this is um, the summary part. Even rocks crack, I'm telling you, and not on account of age. For years they lie on their backs in the heat and the cold, so many years. It almost creates the illusion of calm. They don't move, so the cracks stay hidden, a kind of pride. Years pass over them as they wait. Whoever is going to shatter them hasn't come yet. And so the moss flourishes, the seaweed whips around, the sea bursts forth and rolls back, and still they seem motionless. Till a little seal comes to rub up against the rocks, comes and goes. And suddenly the rock has an open wound. I told you, when rocks crack, it comes as a surprise. All the more so people. So what we're supposed to recognize here is that the rock really does already symbolize people. Um, and, and more so specifically people who appear strong, right? Rocks are always kind of symbolic of something that's strong and steady and sturdy. Um, we even use it when we're talking about people, we use it as a descriptor. Oh, you know, he's like steady as a rock, solid as a rock. Um, and not just physically when we talk about strong, we also talk about, we mean emotionally for people when we describe them as a rock. And so symbolically here, a rock is a strong person, somebody who always seems to have it together emotionally mentally, not just physically. So that's important. So when we take a look at the poem, um, first of all, our narrator is speaking in second person, which is, you know, interesting because it's speaking directly to you and, you know, kind of giving you that direct message. So our narrator is like, you know, even rocks crack, I'm telling you, and not on account of age. So it's not that these people, these rocks over time, they just kind of denigrate. It's, it's just something that happens. So they say, you know, it, it goes on like for years, they lie on their backs in the heat and the cold so many years, it almost creates the illusion of calm. So here is what we're understanding is that these strong people, these emotionally strong people, they go through so much and that's why they get their label as being rocks. That's why they get their label as being strong. The heat, the cold, year after year. For us, it would be like trials and tribulations and different obstacles that make us view someone as strong. Like, wow, I can't believe they kept it together through all of that. You know, they must be so strong. And, but what our narrator is telling us is that it creates the illusion of calm. You know, they seem like it, and our narrator is kind of speaking from a point of wisdom where saying, you know what, it, it may seem like people are, are the strong people are strong, but it, it's like the old adage, like the straw that broke the camel's back. It's like the one thing that will finally, you know, turn that person. So this is what, you know, the, the author continues to say, like they don't move. So the cracks stay hidden, a kind of pride. And that's, that's really key. That's a key point here because we're talking about pride. We're talking about hubris. And I really want you to think about it in connection with Oedipus and just hubris in general when it comes to both um, our conversations around literature, but also around people. And this pridefulness that comes with appearing strong is what our narrator is saying. Appearing strong, illusion of of calm cracks stay hidden it's not that these people don't feel any pain it's not that they're not suffering they are but they're presenting a face that appears so much stronger than they actually are feeling on the inside they don't want to show their emotions they don't want to crack they don't want to show their their metaphorical cracks because either for themselves, it says a kind of pride. So like the, our narrator is not even being descriptive. Like, is it a pride for self? Is it a pride for others? Is it a pride as a pride? It doesn't, it doesn't matter really. It's just this pridefulness that prevents them from showing that they're in pain for whatever reason. And we, we've all 
either known someone like that or have been like that at some point or another. They're talking, our narrator's talking about somebody who's consistently kind of like that. They kind of just take those scenarios in and they don't ever show it, but we know like they must be hurting, right? Like we're human, we hurt. And like, it's just, it's normal. It's perfectly normal to hurt. So they're talking about like, they, they're hiding that hurt and the kind of pride. Years pass over them as they wait. Whoever is going to shatter them hasn't come yet. So there is, we're listening to the tone here. Whoever is going to. So our narrator is self-assured. Our narrator is guaranteeing that there's going to be a moment where our person, our rock, can't take it anymore. And maybe it hasn't happened yet. And so the moss flourishes, the seaweed whips around, the sea bursts forth and rolls back. More time goes on. Things, other things happen, not always necessarily bad, just they continue to hide their little cracks and they, and still they seem motionless. So more things happen and they, the rock still appears, like this person still appears to just be full of strength. But we know then till a little seal comes to rub up against the rocks, comes and goes. And suddenly the rock has an open wound. So there's a lot of stuff going on in those few lines here. A little seal. Okay. Uh, well, first of all, we have to look at, again, the, the, the diction till a little seal. So our narrator shifts diction. So she doesn't use until, she says till. So it, it also makes it a little bit more diminutive, kind of making it smaller. That's what diminutive means. Make, till a little seal, the little also makes it even more diminutive. And seal, when we think of seals, symbolically, they're like the puppies of the ocean, right? So it's like the cutest little furriest, sweetest little thing. You know, it would have a totally different connotation if the, it's like until a shark arrives, like that would feel very differently. So we understand the, the, the connotation that comes with till a little seal comes, like this softness to rub up against the rocks, comes and goes. So just doesn't even linger to, to stay there, just comes and goes, one incident, one little incident, and suddenly, the rock has an open wound and suddenly this person finally cracked. They finally cracked and it seemed like nothing that made them crack. A little seal, one little incident, all of a sudden they're totally falling apart because this whole time, this pride, they've been holding it in. They've been holding it in. They've been trying to protect themselves. They've been trying to maintain the strength that eventually leads them to one tiny thing that sets them over the edge. I told you when rocks crack, it comes as a surprise, all the more so people. So those people who will crack out of nowhere, those people who are holding it in, our narrator's kind of warning us, like, it's just going to take one tiny thing that sets that person over the edge because of their pride as opposed to feeling things as they come, hurting as it comes, and recognizing the obstacles as they arrive. The pridefulness of trying to be stronger than you are, feeling, ignoring emotions, it, it, it actually destroys you over time. Whereas when you're feeling and you're living in that moment, you're building resilience. You're building that grit that will emotionally strengthen you. So I want you guys to think about how is this applying in the story of Oedipus Rex right now. And how does this apply with people? What are your thoughts around this particular poem? Thank you for listening.